and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to draft a very simple pair of elastic waist shorts with inseam pockets. Now, if you've been following my videos recently, you may have heard me mention this McCall's pants pattern a couple of times. Actually, it's a shorts pattern, but I've made a couple of pairs of pants with it and a pair of shorts. I've worn all three of them a lot. I wore them constantly last summer. I've been working them into my spring rotation already and I thought it would be fun to try to make a dupe of that pattern and draft it from scratch. So I'm gonna be using that pattern as a comparison tool as I draft this new pattern. I noticed that a pair of shorts was basically just a skirt with a crotch extension and the same for a pair of pants at the most basic level. I created this skirt sloper in a couple of videos back if you wanna see how I did that. And I'm just gonna be using that as a starting point for the hip measurements of the garment. And then use the book Pattern Making for Fashion Design to draft the crotch extension and add that onto my skirt basically. Now, after drafting this pair of pants, you may still need to make a few adjustments and kind of tweak the fit for your body, but this is definitely a great starting point for anyone who wants to start learning how to draft their own pair of pants. I'll put links down in the description and in the video cards for any videos or resources that I mentioned in this video. So be sure to check those out. Okay, let's get started. For this project, I'm going to be using some leftover linen that I had from a skort that I made a couple of weeks ago. And I have a little less than a yard of this, but I think it'll be enough. So here is the McCall's pants pattern that I use to make my favorite pants for summer and shorts. And I've made a few modifications to the pattern when I first made this. I just kind of folded in the edges a little bit to make it fit a little bit closer. And in the pattern making book, there are basically four types of pants drafts that they use as kind of like a base pants draft. And I'm pretty sure that this McCall's pattern is kind of based off of a culottes pants draft, which is actually pretty easy to draft and I think will work really well with my skirt sloper. So I'm going to use that. So if I line up my front skirt sloper here with the front short for this McCall's pattern, um, this right here is actually just a little extension that I added to the skirt to create a fold over placket. So actually this line right here, which you can barely see, would be the center front of the skirt. And you can see it matches up pretty close with the edge of the pattern. And I would just need to add a crotch extension there. And because I'm going to be doing this as an elastic waist pant, I'm actually not going to taper the waist at the top. I'm just gonna go straight up from the hip and then I'll do the same thing on the back. And then I'll put in an elastic waist up here and go from there. But I'm gonna use the skirt sloper as a starting point for drafting the pants because this already gives me my hip measurements. And it already has my front hip measurement and my back hip measurement, which you can see here how that kind of lines up with the back hip. Again, I'm just gonna go straight up to the waist here and do an elastic, elastic waist. So basically now I just need to figure out the measurements for the crotch curve for both the back and the front. Then I'll come back and compare the patterns to this pants pattern and see how close we get. Um, so this is basically just an experiment for drafting really simple pants, but yeah, that's the plan for this project. I recommend going to watch the skirt sloper video that I created a few weeks ago. And the basic measurements you need for that are your hip circumference and the distance from your waist to your hip. And then you'll just wanna divide your hip circumference into the front hip and the back hip measured from the side seam. And you'll divide those measurements in half because we're only gonna be drafting half the pattern because it's mirrored. You'll also need the crotch depth. And to measure that, you'll just wanna sit on a flat surface. I didn't have a chair. It had a hard flat surface so I sat on my table and then I'm measuring from the top of the table to my waistband and mine was about 11 and 3 quarters inch. My skirt sloper pattern has my front hip and back hip measurements divided between the front skirt and the back skirt and it also has my hip depth measurements and I've aligned the hip depth and butted the two patterns right next to each other at the side seam and I'm just going to trace the basic framework of this pattern onto a new piece of trace paper. So now I have transferred the basic framework for the front and the back skirt to new trace paper. So I've got the center front here of the skirt. This would represent the side seam here. So I've, the back and the front are just right next to each other at the side seam. And then I've marked the center back for the center back. And I've also marked the hip line. So I've got those lined up for both of the patterns. Then I added my crotch depth me measurement, which mine is 11 and 3 quarter inches. And I've drawn that faintly because I'm going to adjust this to add ease to the crotch. 
you can see here, here are my darts from the skirt pattern. I don't have any darts on the front skirt pattern, but again, I'm not gonna be adding darts. So I'm just doing the side seam straight up here and then we will gather the waist with elastic. So now I'm just going to add some ease to the crotch depth measurement and I'll drop that basically by about three quarters of an inch. I also gave myself a lot of extra paper here um, on the center back and the center front for drafting the crotch curve. So just a note about that. You wanna make sure you give yourself plenty of drafting room to draft that extension there. I'll be starting with the front crotch curve extension first. I'll take half of the waist to crotch measurement minus a half inch and make a little notch. Then I'll draft an extension from the crotch depth that is half of the front leg width minus three quarter inch. Then I'll draw a 45 degree angle line from that corner where the crotch extension meets the center front that is an inch and a half long. Then I'll draft a curve that goes from the little notch at the center front down to the tip of the crotch extension and that curve just needs to touch the end of that little 45 degree angle line. And that completes the front crotch curve. Now we can move on to the back. I created a notch at the center back at the same location as the center front and then drew an extension for the back crotch curve that is half of the back leg width plus three quarter inch. Again, I'll draw a diagonal line from the corner, but this time I'll make it one and three quarter inch. And just like the front, I'll draft the crotch curve on the back from that notch down to the tip of the crotch extension, grazing the end of that diagonal line. And to finish the draft, I just need to add a little bit of length for the shorts. I ended up adding a five inch inseam for my shorts, which should give me plenty of length for hemming. So I've drafted both the front and the back crotch curve, and I've just compared it to this McCall's pattern just because I know how this pattern fits and it kind of gives me a little bit of a benchmark to judge my measurements by. Um, but as you can see, like on the front crotch, it's a little bit, the one that I drafted is about maybe three quarter inch longer than the front crotch of the McCall's pattern. And then on the back, it's almost an inch uh, longer for the one that I drafted. And I've got this kind of shifted to account for seam allowance on the McCall's pattern. So I can always trim that off if that's too much. I am a little concerned that I won't have quite enough fabric if I do it this way. So if I do get into a little bit of a tight spot with the fabric, I may just go ahead and trim that off just because I know that it'll probably fit just fine. But you can see kind of the basic shape there. There's the waistband, side seam. I'm just gonna be making short so they go down to here, the hem, the inseam and then the crotch curve there. So if I have enough fabric, I'm going to cut these out as I have them drafted. If not, then I'll trim a little bit off the side seam and the inseam to make it work. And I'll be adding a 5 8 inch seam allowance to all sides of the pattern. As I suspected, I barely have enough fabric for this and the pattern pieces are actually just slightly too large for the amount of fabric that I have. So I am just going to trim down the side seams by, I don't know, maybe half an inch. I think that would give me enough room. And if I really was squeezing it, I could probably trim them down a little bit more and just do a smaller seam, allow seam allowance on the side seams and the inseam. I'm gonna leave the inseam length or the crotch length as it is for now. I'm just kind of curious to see how it fits compared to the pants that I know how they fit. <laughs> okay, that is much better. I ended up trimming off about three quarter inch on both the front and the back on the side seam. So now they fit nice and snug on this less than a yard of fabric that I have. And I also added an inch and a half extension to the waistband on both the front and the back because I'm going to do a fold over waistband and um, this already had seam allowance on it so that ends up being about a two inch extension if you drafted this without seam allowance. I also want to draft some pockets so I'll try to use this remaining fabric here to draft some pockets for the side seams and I'll show you how to do an inseam pocket as well. So I have my pocket pieces drafted here. You want four 
pieces mirrored so you have one for the back and the front on both side seams and to draft a pocket piece you basically just want it to be kind of a bean shape I have mine going straight up because this will attach at the waistband in the top and then this is going to attach in the side seam so I've got a little extension here to attach it to the side seam with a little bit of seam allowance that curves back down to the bottom of the pocket and as far as the size you kind of have to eyeball it but basically you want it to be big enough for your hand plus maybe like an inch or more around the perimeter these are actually a little bit smaller than i wanted but i was kind of limited on fabric so i made them about i don't know maybe an inch or so shorter than i really wanted to but i really like to do big pockets but i was kind of limited so this is what i ended up with so i've attached the pockets to the side seam and all i did was just serge the side seam of the pant leg i did this on both the front and the back just just at the location where the pocket was attached then i attached the pockets right sides together with the pant, pants leg and lined it up with the notch where that waistband is going to fold over and hit the top of the pocket and then i just understitched the seam allowance to the pocket opening here and i've done that for all four of the pants legs so i've got the two back pieces i've got these two back pieces together right now i did the same thing for the front pieces and now with the two back pieces aligned I'm going to sew the center back and the crotch curve and I'll do the same thing for the front and I'm going to finish this edge after I sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance I'm going to finish it with the serger you don't have to do the serger you could do a flat filled seam or um, you could even zigzag stitch the edge but I prefer using my serger it's just kind of nice and clean but if you don't have a serger there are other options and I actually have a video on seam finishes if you are interested in learning some other methods for finishing seams without a serger and I also finished the edge of the pocket where it attaches to the side seam I went ahead and finished that with a serged edge as well I did that before I attached it to the side seam Now that I've got the front and the back pieces assembled, I have put those together, right sides together, and aligned the side seam and the pockets. And I'm just going to sew around the perimeter of the side seam and the pocket with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I want to make sure that I leave this part unstitched so this will be open. This will be the pocket opening. I'm going to sew this on the regular sewing machine first, and then again, I'll go back with my serger and finish those edges and that'll give it a nice clean finish but doing it on the sewing machine first will help me get around these corners and make sure all of that's secure before i go through and serge the edges Once I have the pockets attached and finished, I'm just going to flip the pockets over to the front leg and pin those in place just to the front leg because I'm going to be basting these pockets in place and I want to make sure that the top of the pocket is evenly, evenly spaced from the waistband all the way across. Then with the basting stitch, which is just the longest stitch length on my sewing machine, I'm just going to baste those pockets in place so that once I sew the waistband down, the pockets will be secure. And then I can remove the basting stitches when I'm done. Now I just want to sew the inseam, so I'm gonna match the front and the back up at the crotch here. And pin that in place. And then I'll sew that with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and again finish that with the serger. Next I just need to attach the waistband 
and I've cut a piece of elastic that is the circumference of my waist plus a half inch so that I could overlap and sew it together to create a loop. And I know this elastic is kind of crazy, but this is the only color I had in my stash. So this is an inch and a half wide elastic. I'm going to attach it around the perimeter of the waistband here at the top and then I'll fold it down so that this will be finished here. And to fit this, I'm going to fold this in half like so. So I've got the sewn edge here. This will be the center front. So I'm going to mark that with a pin. Then I will fold it in half the other way, aligning the pin with the center back and then I'll mark the two sides. And so I've got this laid flat on my table and I've got the center front and the center back aligned. So now these two edges here will be the, the exact center of the sides. So I'm just gonna put a pin to mark those. And when I sew this, I'll just stretch the elastic like so as I go under the sewing machine. And I'm just gonna zigzag stitches around the entire top perimeter of the waist. Then I'll just fold this down. I'm gonna do it at all of the side seams and the center front and center back first, just to align it evenly. So I'll fold that down and match it with the seam. And I wanna make sure that I fold it down enough to cover the top of these pockets where I've basted them to the front hand. So I'm folding it down about two inches. And this time I'm just going to sew with a straight stitch all the way around. I really didn't even have to do a zigzag stitch on this first seam because I was sewing it stretched, but anyway, I'll do a straight stitch for this one. Okay, so I just tried on the shorts really quick just to make sure that I liked the fit of the elastic, and I do. And as you can see, this is kind of like really bulky looking here. And one thing that I like to do for a waistband that's sewn with elastic like this is I just like to sew several rows of top stitching along the waistband just to kind of hold that down a little bit better. It makes it a little bit smoother and it looks just a little bit more of a professional finish to do that. The waistband stretched out just a little bit when I sewed all of these rows of top stitching, but I do know from experience, because I've made these pants pants similar to this before, um, once I wash it and dry it, that waistband will shrink up a little bit. It just kind of got a little bit stressed when I was pulling this. I also noticed when I'm wearing the pants, I feel like the inseam side of the hem kind of dips down just a little bit lower than the exterior side. So I'm going to actually kind of trim this so that it is just a little bit straighter and then I will hem it. I'm going to turn it twice to create a wide hem on the bottom of the shorts and then I'll top stitch that in place and then they'll be done. to say I'm actually kind of pleased with how these pants turned out. I think they're pretty cute. I do have a couple of things I would probably tweak on this pattern just for myself. Um, I would probably make the back of the shorts just slightly longer. I did kind of feel like my cheeks might be hanging out in the back a little bit. Um, I think that also could be somewhat rectified. Oh, I don't want to say rectified. I think I could also address that by reducing the crotch length at the inseam. And I talked about this in the video, but it was a very loose fit. So it did feel kind of like it was really far away from my body. It almost felt like a skirt around my bum. And so the shorts felt a little bit short in the back. I think if I just kind of reduced that crotch length, especially on the back, probably just on the back would be enough. I think that would kind of make the shorts fit a little closer to my bum and feel a little bit more secure back there. I think I might also reduce the front rise just a little bit and kind of taper that back to the side seam just because I did feel like the front crotch length was a little bit long. Um, which I could also probably reduce the overall crotch length and maybe not lengthen it by a whole three quarter inch, maybe only go a half inch. 
Um, but yeah, overall, it's pretty darn close to the McCall's pattern that I have. And um, I'll probably start using this pattern now just because I drafted it and I'm really proud. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And you can also give me a thumbs up. I have heard from other YouTubers that that actually helps. So yeah, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.